Hello and welcome to this new video. I am a Wars fan, as you probably already know. Um, yeah, today on the 8th of August 2023, um, the Waterloo and City Line, which today is operated by London Underground, celebrates its 125th birthday. So I thought why not take a 1992 stock, formerly known as Class 484, oh, no, not 484, 42, if I remember correctly, for a spin from, yeah, down the Waterloo and City Line, or down the drain, as they also say. Um, yeah, I think we should probably start this game. Cancel button, okay button. Yeah, and everything else will be explained later. Inside. Then let's start this train. Driver's cap activated. Forward. Lights activated. Brakes released. We're standing here. 628.24. We will be departing at 630. 316. Oh, 316 people. 298. Oh, damn. That's a lot. And we are already standing in a tunnel, so... Yeah. <laughs> windows opened. We open the windows. Don't hear that much. Windows closed. But I can still look at the weather. The current temperature is 10 degrees Celsius. It is cloudy. The highest temperature is 18 degrees Celsius. The lowest temperature is 8 degrees Celsius. The current wind speed is 2 miles per hour in the opposite direction to the direction of travel. Yeah, I have chosen the Anglo-American measuring system, which kind of makes sense when talking about the London Underground, since it's operated in London, UK, and, well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> they use the Anglo-American system there. Um, I'm currently still thinking if I should use feet instead of yards, but the number of feet would become really large fairly soon actually. So until now I always thought that it would probably be better to just use yards. I also thought about using chains. One chain equals 22 yards, but um, that's a bit too long, I think. So yeah, mouse and yards it is. So, what's the time? Okay, let's close the doors. Doors closed. And let's go. The speed limit is 25 miles per hour. The train could theoretically travel automatically, but since the Waterloo and City Lines operate manually, I won't do so today. The Central Lines operate automatically though, but yeah, we don't have this one in CWS until now. Or rather, we had it, but I'm rebuilding most of the routes so that they all have all the new features and because of that I had to take out some routes. They might come back, the speed limit is 50 miles might around. not, we'll see. We can accelerate. Since in London you can accelerate as soon as the front of the train passes the signal that tells you that a different speed limit is valid for now. As opposite to Hmm, let's say Austria or Germany, where you're only allowed to accelerate if the whole train has passed the signal. Which kind of makes sense, but yeah. <laughs> well, let's jump outside. I'm driving eight car train, not a four car train as usual on the WC, but yeah, I thought I could just use this one. Outside. Next station. Front. Back. Buffers. In front of the train. 48. Speed limit change to 25 miles per hour and 875 yards ahead. Fifty. Inside. 
speed limit change to 25 miles per hour and 656 yards ahead. Yeah, and as you can hear, it only tells me the speed limit information and not the distance to the next station. Speed That's because I've added a new feature, which allows you to choose to get the information for the next station via simple sound samples. The singing noise that you can hear sometimes. This one, for example. It's the pitch of this noise becomes gradually higher when approaching a station. So, yeah, if you prefer to hear sounds instead of a voice, then you can choose this. So, at the moment when I release this video, it isn't a really new feature, since I'm currently recording this video in the middle of June, because of time now, so... Yeah, but it'll, release, it'll be released in more than one month, as I mentioned before. Doors opened. Bank, where this train terminates. Change here for the Central, Circle, District and Northern Lines, and the DLR. All change, please. Backward. Driver's cab deactivated. Break. So. That's it. That's one trip on the WNC, the shortest underground line in London. Only 2.3 miles or so? No, 2.3 kilometers, yes. So, really, not much. <laughs> and only two stations. But, yeah, it wasn't always an underground line, actually. Um, it was built in 1898, or rather, opened in 1898 by the LSWR, the London and South Western Railway, who well, ended up at Waterloo, which is th south of the river, but they always want to get into the city. So, across the Thames, basically. But, yeah, building a railway in London was, and still is, very expensive. So, since they didn't have the money and the city and South London Railway, a part of today's Northern Line, opened the first deep-level tube line in 1890, so only eight years before, which has been really successful until now, um, they thought, okay, what they can do, we can do too. So let's build a line from Waterloo to City, which is nowadays called Bank. And yeah, you can see they weren't very creative when naming the new line. I mean, Waterloo and City. Today, we should probably call it Waterloo and Bank Monument Nightmare or something like that. But yeah, it's a kind of useful link. It doesn't operate on weekends and bank holidays, it only operates from, if I remember correctly, 6.30 in the morning to 30 minutes past midnight? Yeah, something like that during weekdays. So, yeah, but it's a useful service. And as it belonged to the LSWR, it was taken by the, over by the Southern Railway in 1923, when the British Railways were grouped together into four large companies, plus the Metropolitan Railway who wanted to stay independent, but didn't see themselves as an underground railway, but rather just as a railway that just happened to run underground. So, yeah, in 1933 they were taken over by London Transport. Um, the Waterloo and City Line stayed a part of the National Railway Network until 1994, so they were taken over in 1948 by British Rail. And in 1994, when British Rail was privatized, which actually took a few years, but yeah, um, London Transport said, okay, listen, it's an underground line, so we'll take it. And they did. Kind of like in the 1970s, they gave the Northern City Line away to British Rail, so you kind of could say that it was a trade. So, yeah, but kind of not really. Anyway, <laughs> that's the story of the Waterloo City Line until now. Oh, and today it operates ni with 1992 stock trains, which only consist of driving motors. So, yeah. 
They apparently haven't heard anything of space-saving measures, like, for example, removing a few of the intermediate caps, but... Yeah, <laughs> the 1992 stock trains aren't the best anyway, so... They should be gone in about 5 to 10 years, if the new 2 for London program delivers the ordered trains as intended. Deliveries should start next year, and the first trains to be replaced will be in the 1973 stock trains on the Piccadilly line. Which kind of makes sense, since people coming in from Heathrow first travel on the Piccadilly, so yeah. Then the Central and Bakerloo lines will follow. The Bakerloo line, which currently operates the oldest train to commercial service on the British network, the 1972 stock. So, yeah, those are also really old. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, then please do leave a like and subscribe for more. And please also share this video if you really like it. And yeah, I'll see you next time.